Hello, and thank you for your interest in the SimCrest product configurator from Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013. I'm Christina McBurney, and I'd like to tell you more about our product configurator. The product configurator is fully integrated with NAV 2013. It's a rules-based configurator for sales and production, and it'll assist you in configuring the right solution for your clients. The sales configuration allows you to answer a questionnaire to configure products that will not require manufacturing. The production configuration will help you to manufacture a specific production bomb and routing. New for NAV 2013, the sales configurator will allow you to create a production bomb. You can also create a new item and a new bomb. Or you can create a new item with an existing bomb if the answers to the questionnaire match. Another option is to use an existing item with an existing bomb if those answers match as well. The product configurator was designed so that components can be added together to comprise a unit. It is also designed to enable a user to customize a particular item. Today I'll show you how we do that. First we go to Application Setup, Configurator, Configurator Setup. What we do here is set up the questions that will be asked of the user as they input a sales order. The settings we have here are general, early close action. Do you want the system to prompt you, always save what you've done, or never save what you've done? Click here to save that configuration. If you edit an item or a line on a sales order, or a production order? Would you like it to prompt you or always clear? These are the recommended and generally used settings. For the sales configurator, this is used when someone wants to add particular components to comprise a unit. This is an item that does not already exist in inventory. It's totally customizable based upon the questions and answers provided by the user. If you would like the system to create a bill of materials from the sales configurator, you can choose no, create a production bomb, an assembly bomb, or prompt the user to ask what type of bomb they would like to create. You also need to set the default item or bomb numbers. This is part of the number series table, and you simply set up a code for your configurated items as done here. If the, the item that you've created is a duplicate item that already exists in the system, or if the bomb already exists because it's been created before, you can ask the system to prompt you and ask if you would like to use the existing item and the existing bomb, create the new item with the existing bomb, or just to create a new item and create a new bomb. So you can either have the system prompt you, or you can choose one of these settings. Also, you would want to establish your default production item number. This is the item number that it's going to create. The default assembly number is also an item that will be used in the assembly order. Choose which item best fits your needs. If you would like the sale price to be based upon the items that go into the finished product, you can choose set default price by item. Or you could have the sale price default to the answers to your questions and the items related to those answers. At the end of creating your sales product in the configurator, you then have the choice to either create that assembly order immediately or to not create it, or have the system prompt you. For the production configurator, your choices are whether or not to save your temporary production bomb or your temporary production routing that you configure. And again, the default price could be based upon the items that go into the finished unit or based upon the answers to your questions. If we go here to Actions, we see the two different configurator setups. First is the Sales Configurator. The purpose of the Sales Configurator is to take the separate components and add them together as a finished unit. This finished unit may not exist in inventory. Because this item is completely customized, you need to ask questions to find out 
which components to add. Here we have set up the series of questions. This is our question list, and you can see from the level that they go in order. You assign each level so that it will go in the appropriate order. In this sample, we're going to be building a computer. Our first question is what type of cabinet will be used? So for example, if I go to actions and go to the card for this particular code, you'll see there is a merit of information available on this particular question. We assign the code and set in the description for select cabinet. If you would need a unique answer, click here. If no answer is allowed, which in this case for a computer, we have to have some type of cabinet, but some items may be optional, so no answer may be applicable. If the answer to the question is only a text answer, you would click here. And if you want the question to come back up in case the user skipped it the first time, you can choose persist question. On the production, you can configure the routing and what type of flushing you need for the scheduling. That's backward and forward. You could use the standard routing or you could load a default bomb. If you want it configured as like a certain item, you can choose that item here. At the bottom, you'll see all the potential answers that exist for that particular question. So for cabinet, we have two answers, desktop cabinet or a tower cabinet. We have set a default to be tower cabinet because that is the most frequently chosen option. You can change these simply by clicking. As you see down here, as you get to number four, there are two number fours. That's because these two questions are dependent upon each other. And if we go to the second question, and we'll find here the trigger lines. This question was dependent upon the previous question. The previous question is what type of disk would you like? And then the previous answer, if it was SCSI, then it brought you to this question. Had the user chosen the other option, which is normal, this step would have been skipped. One thing to note is here on the zip disk, you had the option to say no answer is allowed. Perhaps the user doesn't want a zip disk on this particular computer. At the bottom here, we give the user the option to name their computer. Since that answer does not have a code or any other type of yes, no answer, it is selected as a text answer only. The production configurator is another set of questions, or a questionnaire if you will, with the same level codes assigned. The production configurator is different than the sales configurator. The sales configurator takes separate components, adds them together in order to make a finished item. The production configurator takes an item from inventory and then customizes it based on the answers to the questionnaire. In our example for the production configurator, we're going to build a bicycle. So your bicycle may be green, it may be blue, it may be black, red, or silver. It also may have bells, it also may have streamers, there's many different options that can be added to the bicycle. But here we have created a list of questions. Again, we go to actions and card, from there we can see what is associated with that particular question. Again, because this is a production order, it is related to the manufacturing piece of NAV. So there's going to be questions and answers related to that. Again, the same options are here on the right for unique answer, no answer allowed, text answer only, or to persist the question. What becomes important here is the scheduling, the routing, and the use of a default BOM and the item configuration subform. At the bottom, we have potential answers. This particular question does not have an answer needed. It is just asking you what you want to produce. So what we're telling the system is when they ask what you want to produce, you have two options. You may produce item 1000 or item 1001. The product configurator questionnaires can be as simple or as advanced as you need. 
There are many possibilities available, and if you need our assistance, we're happy to help you in any way we can. Now that we've got the product configurator for sales and for production established, we're now ready to use both. We create a new sales order just as normal. We choose our customer, and we add any additional information as needed. Our first demonstration will be for the sales configurator. When on the line, go to Functions, Configurator, Sales. That automatically opens the box of our questionnaire. As we saw before, our first question is select your cabinet. The default selection will already be checked. I'm going to keep the tower cabinet. If you open this bottom box, it's going to show your answers, the quantity, and what price is assigned to that particular answer. If I say next, it brings me to my next question here, select processor. I can go through the list here of all the different processors and their associated cost. Here I set up a new one. I'm going to choose the largest, fastest one and say next. The next question is select your RAM. I'm going to choose 512 and next. If I pull down here you can see it is adding each component and its associated price. It's going from the bottom up. Here is the disk controller question that had the SCSI question tied to it. So they were both a level 4 question. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this defaulted as a SCSI controller and say next. And then it's going to take me to the select SCSI disk. If I go back, had I chosen the IDE controller and said next, it would take me directly to the following question, which is related to the hard disk. So you can see how if one question depends on the next question, how that affects the next upcoming question. I'm going to choose the larger SCSI disk. I'm going to keep the high resolution graphics card and I'm going to go for a 21 inch monitor. Now it wants to know if I want a network connection. Of course! And I want the advanced performance keyboard. And the zip disks, perhaps I don't want a zip disk. Now that I'm completed with this configuration, our last question in our questionnaire was to name your computer. I'm going to name this one Christina's PC. Next, it shows the total of this configuration and I can say finish. As soon as I say finish, because I chose on the settings for it to prompt me, it's asking me, what would you like me to do with this sales configuration? Do you want me to create a bomb? And typically you would want to create some type of bomb, but do you want that to be a production bomb or an assembly bomb? And that depends on your configuration of NAV and whether you use the full manufacturing, if you make your orders as they come in, or if you produce them all at the same time. For this sample, I'm going to say create an assembly bomb. And it created it, but it wants to know, do you want to create it now or later? I say always create it now so you don't forget to create it later. Now, if the due date was before my work date, it's going to give you a warning. So be sure that your dates are correct. You can go back and edit your dates if needed. Now if I look at my order, I see this long configuration number that was set on our product configurator setup page and no description. Here I'm going to fill in maybe a particular description that's meaningful for my customer. From the sales order screen you can go to line, assemble to order, assemble to order lines to see what components go into this particular computer. Take a look at one thing that we did not add ourselves. The system was set to automatically add the resource and how many hours it takes that particular employee 
to put together the computer. That is done through your production routing and through the manufacturing setups. We're going to use the same order as an example for the production configurator. As I mentioned before, in this example, we're using the production configurator. And when you use that particular configurator, you're going to take an item that is an inventory and customize it just for you. In the production configurator setup, we chose item 1000 as a customizable item. That is our bicycle. Once we have chosen the bicycle, we need to tell the system how many bicycles we're about to build. In this example, we're just going to build one. We then go to Functions, Configurator, Production. The first thing the system is going to ask you is what type of production order do you want to place? Depending on your company practices and how you use manufacturing in NAV, you can choose to create a production order that is simulated, planned, or firm planned. Typically, because the customer is placing the order, you want to go ahead and create a firm planned order. Say OK, and then it's going to open up the questionnaire. Our first question is going to say, load the default BOM. It's going to load the default BOM for the item that you selected on the line. We selected the bicycle. So once I say next, it's going to bring up all of the options for a bicycle. Here you see our choices are black, red, or silver. I'm going to choose a black bicycle and say next. Next question in our questionnaire is select the wheel size. I'm a little on the short side, so I'm going for 23 inches. You want a normal saddle or a racing saddle? Well, of course, we're going to go for the racing. The default setting for the mud guards is front, and that's good. I want a lamp because sometimes I like to bike at night. I always like to ring the bell. Uh, handlebars are very useful. So once I have configured my bicycle, it shows the total here based on the answers that were provided to each question. I can say finish. Now the firm planned production order has been created. This concludes our demonstration of both the sales configurator and the production configurator. If you have further questions, please let us know. We'll be happy to help you. Let's stay connected. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or LinkedIn, or give us a call or email. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for your interest in SimCrest. Have a great day.